but going up against that man, just as legendary as George Galinovich, these two are two of the best, if not the two best, in college soccer. Should be a fantastic matchup, tactically as well as athletically on the pitch tonight. Yeah, he's coached nearly three decades here at UVA, taking over for Bruce Arena. And these two coaches, despite being bitter rivals in the ACC, really good friends along the way. Hey, we lost this incredible rivalry after the 2013 season when Maryland voyaged to the Big Ten. We got it back in D.C. for four seasons, but we're back on campus sites tonight, and off we go from Charlottesville. Maryland in the black and Virginia in the white. Patty, what are you looking for early in this match between these two? Well, I think it's important to see at what pace this game is played. You see a little bit of a bad giveaway there from Holden Brown, but Virginia's going to want to knock the ball around. They want to play at a little bit of a slower pace than does Maryland. Maryland would love for this game to be back and forth using that athleticism that we talked about. So important early to see at what pace is this game played and who's dictating possession. Yeah, Patty, we spoke with Sasho Sarovsky yesterday, and he said he really enjoyed his team's pace in the second half against Wake Forest on Friday night in College Park. That was a nil-nil draw with the number 16 Demon Deacons, but they really controlled play in that second half, and Wake Forest really had nothing to show for themselves. Well, Maryland was very unlucky not, not to find a, a goal. Certainly a missed penalty doesn't help, but they had chance after chance in that second half to, to go up and get three points against Wake. Not a bad result, scoreless draw, but certainly some questions to be asked of this Terrapin team here early. Two of the three first games scoreless, and so looking to find that goal-scoring presence, that, that goal-scoring rhythm, we've seen how, how athletically gifted they are in that front three. They're certainly capable of finding chances, but can they capitalize and put them in the back of the net? It'd be important to see here tonight who is going to be that goal scorer. Yeah, the Terps scored their two goals against UNCG, the number 10 Spartans at the time on August 27th. Joe Suhetsky scored, Kamani Stewart-Bain scored for the Terps. But as you mentioned, Patty, the other two games against Missouri State, a 1-0 loss, and then the game against Wake Forest on Friday, nothing on the board. And Coach Sarovsky told us he's still trying to find those attacking combinations. He has a lot of options, especially at his central forward spot, but not a lot of magic so far in the final third. Deep throw in here for Virginia. Paul Visa takes it, the junior from Germany. Making his 38th career start tonight. Patty, in addition to what he has to do defensively, he's also a really big playmaker from the back for this Cavs team as well. Well, he's capable of whipping in a very dangerous ball from distance, really. He's a little bit of a different right back than, you, than you'll see as opposed to Reese Miller on the left. He, he's not ultra pacey. He, he loves to get in good spots, and his service is very quality when he gets a, a yard or two. Humberto Pella loses the ball, the sophomore for Virginia. Skitters free, and it goes to the Maryland Terrapins. Our referee tonight is David Erbacher. The assistant referees, Rick Rogers, Larry Stroud, and our fourth official tonight is Joe Worrell. Meanwhile, the Cavaliers 2-1 so far in the young season with wins over Iona and George Mason on Thursday, a loss against Loyola Marymount sandwiched in between those two results. George Mason went down to 10 men in the first half, and Virginia already had the goal from Anor, and they pretty much held on from there. Yeah, I mean, similar to Maryland, I think this Virginia team is looking for goals as well. I mean, three goals through three games against opponents that, you know, at least two of the three likely won't play in the NCAA tournament. A little bit of a head scratcher. I, I think in that George Mason game especially, you saw a, a deep block from Mason that got even deeper when they went down to 10 men. But Virginia really did not hit their rhythm and was not creating chances like George Galvach knows they're capable of, so that's important today. Can they string some passes together early? Can they get the ball to that man, Motiam, who has looked fantastic throughout the first three games, and see if he can produce a little bit of magic and perhaps a chance here early? TM, the fifth-year senior, started his career at Radford, then a few years at Oregon State, an all-Pac-12 first-team selection a year ago, now in his first year with UVA. And I'd imagine, too, Patty, for UVA, probably tough to evaluate that game against Mason from a defensive standpoint because Mason played with 10 players for about 60 minutes of that match. Yeah, I mean, I don't think the questions for this Virginia team have to do with that back line. It's, it's fairly experienced, certainly two very experienced center backs in Aiden O'Connor and Will Citron. Holden Brown has been solid throughout his career, now third year starting. So I, I don't think that's where the questions for this Virginia team lie. I think it's in building through the midfield and finding chances that they have yet to hit their rhythm here early on. This is Luca Costabile down 
for Maryland, the sophomore left back for the Terps. Making his 22nd career start tonight. Very important piece in the back for Sasha Sarovsky. As our referee tonight, David Urbacher, stopped the clock. Well, Maryland has a couple of injury question marks entering this game. Kenny Quist Thurston, the star freshman who plays as a CDM, he was involved in a heavy collision to his head in the 10th minute of that match against Wake Forest. He returned with a bandage surrounding his head, but not in the starting 11 tonight. And they also don't have Albi Indrenica, a sophomore who played a lot last season as a freshman. All right, I, I think... Certainly those are two losses, but Luca Costabile is a huge piece of, of not only the back line for Maryland, but going forward from that left back spot. You see just a little bit of an awkward challenge there with Leo Afonso. It would be interesting to see who Sarovsky would use if Costabile couldn't go the rest of the way. He played all 90 against Wake Forest and Played a majority of the two matches before that against Missouri State and UNCG. Well, good to see Costabile get back on his feet. Sophomore from Copenhagen. He's played in 90 minutes in 12 career matches. And again, he's only a sophomore. He was on the All Big Ten freshman team a season ago. Number 51 in top drawers mid-season freshman rankings. So for the moment, Maryland will play with 10. But here comes Castabule back on the field. So 11 aside. You know, Patty, it's interesting. You played in four of these matchups during your time with UVA. You just wonder if the intensity is exactly the same now that these two teams are in different conferences. Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. I, I think those matchups, you know, in the ACC, you knew what you were going to get. You were up for the game, and there was no one you wanted to play more than Maryland. Now that they've left the ACC, and those were, you know, neutral site matchups at Audi Field, which, by the way, was a very cool outing and, and, a, and a neat thing to do, maybe this rivalry lost a little bit of an edge, but I can guarantee you that every single player on, on the pitch and on the roster knows the history of this matchup and, and knows the rivalry that exists and, and so it'll be interesting to watch now five minutes in but interesting to watch down the line in this game the emotions as they start to come out for you what was it like <laughs> i mean there's no one that i wanted to play more than maryland there's no one i wanted to be more than maryland when i was a player at virginia so i, I think the emotions are high and the respect is high. I mean, this is a Maryland program like Virginia that puts out pros, that, that it has a lot of history and plays a good style of soccer year in and year out. So they're really fun games, both as a spectator and certainly as a player. Yeah, Maryland, uh, Patty, loves to brag about this. The Terps are the only school in the nation with alums that have been rostered in the last four FIFA Men's World Cups. Uh, that's a great fact. No, I mean, it's, it's extremely impressive, and, and you just look down the line at the Maryland alums and what Sasha sarovsky has been able to do from a recruiting and from a player development aspect. He, he is one of, if not the best, in college soccer, and that shows in, in the players that he's put into the pros. Hey, there's that physicality we're looking for. Stefan Copetti in a tangle there. Holden Brown having trouble with it in the back, and he's screaming at his left back in Reese Miller. So a throw in here for Maryland with Kento Abe, senior from Massachusetts, who didn't get much opportunity in his first three years because of Nick Richardson, who was a two-year captain at that spot. But Coach Sarovsky has been very proud with Abe sticking through it and becoming a key piece on defense here in his senior season. Well, he's looked good, really, through the first three games. It's interesting to note, actually, that we've talked about Stephen Anor and Mo Tiam, two wingers for Virginia that do different things. Tiam loves to tuck inside. He loves to get the ball centrally and be a little bit more of a playmaker from that spot, whereas Anor is, is more vertical. They've actually flipped here in this game, Anor on the right side and Tiam on the, on, on the left. That's the first time we've seen that really all year, and you, you've got to think perhaps George Galinovich likes that matchup with a Noor going more vertical at Costabile and maybe Tiam just playing in front of Abe and trying to be a playmaker from, from this near side. You like that decision? Well, I think I think it's a, it's an interesting play. I'm I'm not sure I'm not sure what the what the impetus 
for that is. I think it has more to do with Anor going against Kastabile than the other matchup. But you've seen Motiam tuck way far inside early on here, almost playing as another central midfielder, and, and really vacate that left-hand side. It allows Reese Miller, who's very capable as a left back, to get forward. And so I, I think the idea is good, and we'll see how the execution is. Yeah, it was Tiam who created the goal for Anor against Mason back on Thursday night. Tiam was driving down the far flank, and it eventually found the foot of Anor. Fifth year senior from Senegal. Micah Seeger in net for Maryland tonight. The Terps have split goalkeeping responsibilities over the first four games. Jamie Lowell got two starts. Seeger with a 90-minute shutout with five saves against UNCG in Maryland's second match of the year after not playing at all as a freshman. Alvin Gashi delivers it to Reese Miller and now TM. Leo Afonso wearing the captain's armband. Nice slide tackle there from Kolvik. Alfonso yanks it back. Gashi couldn't connect there with Axel Allender, the transfer from James Madison in his second year with the Cavaliers. And now a foul just outside the circle from Umberto Pella. And he is pleading his case, but he has shown yellow. That's his third yellow card already. And it's only game number four of the season. Right, it's just a professional foul really here from, from Alberto Pella, not allowing the Terps to get out and run at that back line for Virginia. But this is a very early on yellow. And you see just maybe the slightest of touches there on Kolvik. And I don't know about that one. Well, the other night against George Mason, there was a red card given out to Zach Golden in the 35th minute. And watching that match, Patty, I, I know you thought that was a little bit of a soft call as well. Yeah, I mean, I think that red card certainly asked the question of, of the center referee and the question, the answer ended up being red. On this occasion, I think it has to do more with Maryland getting out in transition and, and that being a professional tactical foul from Pella. But nonetheless, it, it's this is not a game that you want your, your number six, your defensive midfielder. Anor dancing inside. Afonso shoots and he squirts it just wide. Oh, how about the speed on the far flank? Well, you get a look back at it here. This is how quick it happens. Steven Anora, good touch inside right here. Just gets gets around, tees in there, and then slips it here to Afonso. Perhaps Afonso could push that one to TM. Nonetheless, he just jabs at it a bit. Can't put it on frame. But this is what Steven Anora brings to the game in transition. So quick and going right at that Maryland back line. A golden chance here early on for Leo Afonso and the Cavaliers. And Patty, I'll tell you what, Teasen gets away with it there because he thought about dragging him down. That could have been a red card potential but instead the shot goes wide and no harm, no foul. UVA cranking up the pace here early as Kolbik shields it out of bounds in front of Leo Afonso. We should be getting a water break past the midway point of this first half tonight. 88 degree night from Charlottesville, very muggy. Anor just blasts it off of Alex Nitzel, the captain for Maryland. And now the Terps try the counter. Nitzel to Stuart Baines on the inside. Out wide to Abe. Plays it forward, a collision there. And Aiden O'Connor sends it out of bounds. The two-time Michigan Gatorade Player of the Year, now a senior with UVA. Oopsie. Abe through three UVA defenders, but the Cavaliers closed down the space very nicely. Patty, you said early that you thought Maryland would want to play with an increased pace, but it's really been mostly UVA so far through the opening 11 and a half minutes. 
Yeah, I think that's right. I, I think Virginia's done a good job of playing the game in the Maryland half. They, they've played with a little bit of a quasi-press and pushing Maryland deep into their own half. Maryland struggled through the first 12 minutes to connect through the midfield, though. And I think when you see Maryland get out in transition, it largely is the midfield finding players like this, Kamani Stewart-Baines wide. So I think perhaps we're just missing that that linkage through the midfield for the Terps in getting out in transition. Yeah, Sasha Sarovsky told us that those combinations, they need to be developed, and they had a little bit of a slow preseason for a myriad of reasons. One, their field wasn't ready, so their exhibitions weren't at home. They had some injuries. Like, I'd imagine, Patty, that just has to take some time. Yeah, and he's got, I mean, he has a number of, of new faces in, in that attack and, and in the midfield, really. So that's that's normal. You know, through the first three, five games, pushing into conference play, you're, you're going to have to find the combinations that, and the personnel that, that work. Mo TM on the takeaway for Virginia. Numbers inside the box for the Cavaliers. TM drives it, goes off Kolvik, and then the sprawling stop from Seeger. But it was out of play. Seeger's disgusted. The referee will stop the clock. And I believe a yellow card will be shown to the sophomore keep. Uh, it's a good takeaway from Motiam here. Maybe just waits a, a half second too long to have a strike on goal. But you see there, just a little bit out of bounds there from Micah Seeger. Disgusted, throws the ball away. Gets away with one a little bit without the card. But Yeah, so they did not give him the card. Short corner here for UVA. Pella goes down, and he earns the whistle. A glorious opportunity early for the Hoos. So Umberto Pella gets the yellow card in the opening minutes of the match, and now he draws a key foul. All right, this is a really smart play from Umberto Pella. Just puts his body just in the way there between the ball and Tizen, and Tizen, a, a little bit overzealous, goes straight through Umberto Pella. There's no reason for that. He's got his back to goal in, in a not in a dangerous spot, but that is absolutely a foul and the right decision from David Urbacher to point to the spot. So now it's Leo Afonso, the senior captain, against Micah Seeger. Afonso is four for six on penalty kicks in his Cavaliers career. And a yellow card has been shown to Sasho Sarovsky on the Maryland sideline. Now we're getting a little bit what we came for, huh, Corey? Yeah, here we are. And Sarovsky applauding the crowd as Alfonso takes it and buries it in the corner. It's 1-0 Hoos. And Alfonso has some words for the Maryland bench. Oh, we are so back. Ten years without this matchup on campus sites in the regular season. Oh, yeah. Right, it's cool as you like here from Leo Font. So just a stutter step, sends Seeger the wrong way, tucks that one beautifully in the right-hand side, and then a little bit of extracurriculars there from the senior captain, Leo Font. So letting that Maryland bench know that he's here and 1-0 to, to Virginia. A fantastic finish from Alfonso to put the who's up 1-0. Well, Patty, I asked you the question about two minutes in if the rivalry still existed for the players, and clearly the answer is a resounding yeah. So a yellow card has come out again. And it's going to Mo TM. I hope uh, David Erbacher brought enough juice in his pen tonight. Now you got to be really careful, though, with with the emotions of this game and how it started to ramp up. Now Tiamo sitting on a yellow. you got Umberto Pella sitting on a yellow. Sasha Sarovsky coaching on a yellow. And so you, you got to show a little bit of, of experience if you're Motiem. Being a grad student, yeah, it's your first year here in Charlottesville, but 
now you got to be smart because there's there's a lot of soccer left to be played. Yeah, that's the best part about this, huh? A lot more to play. Holden Brown shake, takes charge here for UVA. Senior for the Cavaliers, who has now started in three out of the first four matches. Joey Petruni, the transfer from Coastal Carolina, got a start against LMU earlier in the year. 3-1 loss against Loyola Marymount. Holden Brown thought about racing out of his 18-yard box. He stays in. Shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder contact along the far side. Headed down and in! Oh, the quick response from Maryland! And Stefan Capetti tells the Virginia crowd to silence. Oh, man, this is great. Well, game on, Corey. Look at this from... Kamani Stewart Banks racing down that right-hand side. Big boy just tosses Visa to the ground and then a fantastic service into the box and a tremendous header there from Stefan Capetti to go up, meet that ball, knot it down. Nothing Holden Brown can do. Tie this game 1-1, just back and forth. Everything we could hope for here in the opening 15 minutes. 43 seconds separates the two goals and we are back to a deadlock. Well, it's interesting, Patty. The last time these two teams played here in Charlottesville, it ended in a 3-3 draw, but all six goals were scored in the first 30 minutes of that match, and I believe a guy by the name of Patty Foss scored one of them. Uh, it was a very similar game to this in that opening 15 minutes. I mean, back and forth, back and forth, a lot of emotion and a lot of goals. You can only hope that we're in for another four goals here tonight. OTM to take the corner kick for UVA with Pella arriving short. Driven towards the penalty spot, and it's off the head of Bjarne Tiesen, a graduate student from Germany. Back into the box, and an easy scoop for Seeger. Oh, and I, I think we are going back in black and white. No, it's staying in color. How did you score from here? Look at that. How did you sneak that one through, man? I think it went through a number of bodies. That was the only way you were going to put one past Zach, Zach Steffen in that Maryland net. That was one of your eight career goals. All right, back we move on to uh, 2023 as we exit the time machine. Goal okay. kick, Maryland. You probably talked about that goal for a very long time. No comment, Corey, no comment. <laughs> you know, we talked to Sasha Sarovsky before the game, and he said, look, like, like you said, Patty, the matchups at Audi Field were very cool in D.C., but the buzz and the energy of playing on a campus site, it's just a little bit different. Well, it definitely is, and listen, in College Park, Ludwood Field is a fantastic atmosphere. It's as good a stadium as you're going to find that you can play inside a track. So the, the, maybe the dimensions are a little small, but they've made it just a fortress. Klockner Stadium is the best pitch in America, and it's a fantastic atmosphere. Of course, Maryland will bust students in. We know they're here tonight, and we know they're behind that Holden Brown bench. You see them there, and, and it just makes the rivalry all the better. I mean, these are just fantastic nights for everybody involved, including Maryland fans, including Virginia fans, and, and we've seen a, a level here in the opening 17 minutes that, that lives up to the hype. Yeah, the crew is here, the student supporters for Maryland. They paid for a bus ride over here to Charlottesville. I'd imagine you and the crew don't get along very well. <laughs> I think, I think uh, there's plenty of stories between me and the crew. Not, not a whole lot of love. And not a lot of uh, shareable stories, I'd imagine, for the air tonight? Ex exactly. Yeah, that's but what I thought. One of the best student sections in college soccer. They do such a good job on the atmosphere in College Park and, and just a tremendous, tremendous place to play. Paul Visa earns the throw-in for UVA here. 
Well, if you're just joining us, uh, you missed a lot. Tensions flying here from Clockner Stadium. UVA earning a PK with Leo Afonso scoring right before that. A yellow card given out to Sasha Sarovsky. Maryland then equalized, and here come the Cavaliers on the run. The shot whistled home. Motiem. His first as a Cavalier. Fast and furious tonight from Klockner. Well, this is a fantastic individual effort here from Motem. He sees just a bad touch there in the back from Kovic. Makes the most of it. Excuse me, that's Abe. Makes the most of it here. It's so composed in the box. Pushes it to that left foot and then smashes one past Micah Seeger. The first goal as a Cavalier for Motem is a huge one to put the Cavaliers up 2-1 here early in the first half. UVA with three goals in its first three matches of the season. Two tonight and we're not even halfway through the opening half. And we're talking about a Maryland back line that has a lot of experience. Now, the one question mark along that back line, the relationship between the two center backs and Bjarne Tizen and William Kolvik. Tizen's the transfer from West Virginia in his first season with Maryland. He was injured for a majority of the preseason, and his first time together with William Kolvik was the first regular season game of the year against Missouri State, a 1-0 loss for Maryland. Well, that's right. And then you talk about Kento Abe, who is a senior, yeah, but it is his first year starting. This is only his fourth career start, and just a, a bad touch, frankly, there, leading to, to that Motiem goal. Now some open space for Kamani Stewart-Baines, a little bit behind Costabile. He's in a tangle there. Multiple bodies to the floor. Maryland wins it back. Open space along the near side for Kento Abe. Capetti, who scored for Maryland. That was the equalizer before the goal by TM. Down the line, Max Riley tries to step in front of Aiden O'Connor, throw in Maryland. Patty, I'd say the game script that both coaches had going into this one, it, it did not look uh, exactly how they planned it out. I'm not sure. I, I, I think it's exactly how he thought it was going to be. Oh, a really? Helter Skelter, a lot of emotions, goals galore. I mean, this is exactly what you could hope between Maryland and Virginia. Hey, I'm with you. Afonso ridden down here by Kolvik. Free kick, Virginia. And Leon Kuehl starts to lose his cool. You know, it's tough to see the nastiness in non-conference play. You don't normally see it until you get to conference play, but because of the history we've talked about between these two programs, clearly it exists tonight. Gashi. Now to Afonso. TM in the corner. Afonso, his help. Deals it back to TM. Reese Miller, one of the best freshmen in the entire country a season ago, now a sophomore. Free kick UVA, another foul. This one's on Kuehl. Patty, what's available from this set piece position here for UVA? Well, I think if you're Paul Visa, you want to whip this ball in just between the six and the and the penalty spot. And if nobody touches it, how about having it sneak in that far post? But you, you want a ball over that beats that first man that allows your runners to go get it and, and that skips it in front of Seager. Visa, a defender with nine assists so far in his career. He's a junior. Scans that Maryland back line. He floats it in back post. And it's hauled in by Seager. A little too close there to the key, Patty. Yeah, and I think just not enough pace there from Visa. Just aired it up, allowed big Micah Seeger to come and get that one. Very casual for, from, from the sophomore. Easy catch in the end. 
Aiden O'Connor blasts it into the attacking third for UVA. Kuehl heads it forward. Gashi delivers it high in the air. TM involved in a collision with Kento Abe. And the referee will stop play, not for a foul, but because of a head injury here to TM. And he's calling for the athletic trainer to come out and take a look at TM. And you see Kento Abe just going up over Motiem. I, I really have no problem with that being a, a no call from David Erbacher. Motiem just kind of backing into Abe, but nonetheless, just gets a little bit of a forearm to the head. So this should be a drop ball situation here for Maryland with William Kolvik near the ball. Now this sometimes is a misunderstood rule. The defending player is allowed to be inside of 10 yards, unlike on normal free kicks. No call here, it's back to TM. Open space for Pella. Tees it up, Pella from distance, just wide. Maryland. Well, Umberto Pella has certainly had his hand so far in this match. Well, Pella seems like he's been everywhere, getting yellow cards, getting in the box, drawing that penalty, and then feeling the juice a little bit here, trying to beat Seeger from 30 yards out. Patty, he's a sophomore now. His freshman year, he only played in four games, just over 100 minutes total. But he's been in the lineup consistently so far this season for UVA. Where have you seen him grow the most this year? Uh, I think when you talk to George Galovich throughout the spring, he, he really grew and grew into that spot in which he left no other choice but to be the starting six for this Cavaliers team. I, I think at times he, he can be a little bit invisible, and that's where he struggled maybe throughout the first three games. But when he's on, he's really good. He finds really good spots. He can be that connector deep lying in midfield, and you're seeing a little bit here tonight starting to build some confidence and starting to, to play the, in, in that role. He's certainly been visible tonight, though, as Maryland tries to cash in on a second goal. Here's the first goal scorer for the Terps and Capetti. Back to Abe. Lofts it to the back post. Collision there. Rebound set high and wide. The referee did not signal a foul initially as Holden Brown was bolted into. I think George Galovac pleading the same case there as Holden Brown. Holden Brown comes out, looks like a casual catch, looks very comfortable, and then re really collides there with Kamani Stewart-Baines. Nonetheless, a, a fortunate break for the Cavaliers in that the effort goes on goal, and it's a goal kick. Well, the most underpaid people on staffs for all athletic teams, the athletic trainers. Uh, they're going to be busy after tonight's match between these two foes. Maryland and UVA, 2-1 the score. Cavaliers get the first goal on a PK from Leo Afonso. And then 43 seconds later, Maryland ties it up with Capetti. Mo TM gets the second for UVA. Fun start here from Klockner. Hello, Patrick Mahomes. Hold on. Wait, who do you even play for? T-Mobile. And I'm here to protect you from wireless companies that blitz you with phone deals that sack you with a three-year device contract. Even I can get sacked? Not at T-Mobile. They have plans that make upgrades work for you. They even have a plan which makes you upgrade ready every year. Thanks, Ben. Now can I do the thing? Do the thing. Excellent. Take charge of your upgrades with our best Go 5G plans at T-Mobile. Let's have a huddle. You don't know what huddle is, do you? No. Wow, it's been something tonight so far between these two teams, Virginia and number 20, Maryland. We're about midway through the first half. We've gone through a hydration break, and Virginia has a 2-1 lead. Corey Spector with Patty Foss, and Patty, I'm running out of adjectives, and it's early in the match. As advertised, how about that? That works. Hey, apparently they detect the temperature through this great machine called the wet bulb globe temperature. And that's how they determine if they need the water break. 
We learned about this scientific contraption before the game. They didn't have this in uh, 2013 for you guys, Patty? You know, I, I was not meteor meteorological studies major, so I, I, I can't comment on it, but looks pretty legit. Nice job with that adjective there. Meteorological. Ooh. I don't know. Is that a, is that a word? Uh, can't say I necessarily got A pluses in English class, but thank you for the definition here. That's beautiful. So helpful. All right, we're back in play. Holden Brown chops it out of bounds with not a lot of pressure here on this near side from Capetti. Meanwhile, Maryland has brought on Colin Griffith, number nine in black, sophomore forward who was the MVP of the MLS Next U19 League with PDA a couple of years ago. He could be a difference maker up front for UMD. Long throw from Miller, finds the thigh of Fonzo, but it's sent all the way to the back where Bjarne Tizen is there for UMD. Patty, would you sense either coach during that hydration break told their team, hey, like, you know, let's slow it down a little bit here? I, I would think both. <laughs> we saw kind of a frenetic pace back and forth there for, for really a 15-minute stretch, and now I think you'll start to see both teams at least try to settle in because it's just not sustainable what, what we saw in the opening minutes, and you would expect it, listen, oh, coming down here. to have the emotions, to have the adrenaline, and to see what we saw. But now you got to find the soccer in this game and see if you can start to impose your rhythm of play and your style of play on the opponent. David Erbacher asking for a restart here with William Kolbick. And he also begs Motien to back up a little bit. Kolbick, a dart down the line. Nice head from O'Connor. And UVA tries to turn it quickly with the speed of TM. Mo TM slides down. Good to see Kenny Quist Thurston in there for Maryland. He was a question mark entering tonight's match. Kenny sustained a little bit of a bump on the head the other night against Wake Forest. He stayed in the game. Sasha Sarovsky told us that they wanted to monitor his minutes because he played 90 minutes in a match a couple of matches ago, but he is in there in his familiar CDM spot. Also in is Tyler Prebenda, the freshman who has only played in 14 minutes so far against Missouri State in the opener. So Sarovsky using some of his substitutes here. This is headed through, and Virginia gets it out of the box on a blast from Gashi. Prebenda up top to Griffith, combines with Prebenda. Those two continue to play catch. Griffith knocks it off the body of the defender, Miller. Quist Thurston picks his head up, and he finds the chest of Stephen Anor. <laughs> Patty, I think you're right. It's time to slow it down for both squads. Yeah, and I think Maryland has really struggled to find their shape and to find uh, some rhythm, as we talked about a little bit, through the midfield, not stringing passes together. I see a good run here from Visa, but Virginia has looked more composed on the ball, as you're seeing now, able to knock it around. If you're Sasser Swarovski, you got to find the ball a little bit and see if you can connect through that midfield three. No touch. The bump. The bump. Fonzo steers it. TM to Afonso, the two goal scorers linking up here. Afonso off the left foot. It hits off the body of Seeger and Maryland clears. Let's see if the Terps can maintain possession here as you talked about, Patty. No, they can't. TM with Gashi, back to TM. Inside the 18, TM uses the outside of the boot. Regains, hits it off a Terp. Off Nitzel, corner kick UVA. Cavaliers fans loving it. 
Uh, and that press for Virginia has been just so good here to start this opening 28 minutes. I mean, they are pushing Maryland deep and not allowing the Terps to play out through through that back. Motiab is just that dude right now going down that left-hand side. I mean, he is just punishing this for this Maryland back line chance after chance from the grad student. The pounding of the bleachers begins. Third corner kick of the night for UVA. Cavs take it short. Umberto Pella on the right foot. Back to Miller. And he just could not get solid contact on it. Patty, one of those where he opens up his eyes too wide? <laughs> Perhaps there from Reese Miller. Hollander too strong in front of Anor and a goal kick here from Maryland. You know, Patty, both teams came out in a 4-3-3 formation tonight. Because Maryland is struggling to maintain the ball in the midfield, would you change anything tactically? It's a good question. Uh, and uh, this is a Terps program that historically has been very comfortable in a 4-4-2. And, and I think, you know, maybe that's a leading question, Corey, but I think you have to think about a, a change at halftime if it stays the same from Maryland because they're getting pushed deep for a, l a large portion of this first half. So can you maybe add a player in midfield and try to build out through through maybe a diamond? There's some space for Probenda with TM monitoring him. It should be fascinating to see what these two teams decide at halftime. This is Justin Harris, graduate student from Maryland, his fifth year. He takes a shove here from Gashi. Now those two will have a quick chit chat. During your four matchups with Maryland, Patty, uh, you like to uh, chat it up with the opponent? <laughs> yeah, we had some good dialogues. Yeah. How you doing? What'd you have for lunch earlier today? I'm sure those were the discussions, right? Yeah, we talked about meteorolo meteorological studies. We're still on that? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Towards the 18-yard box, Griffith gains it against William Citron for UVA. Griffith holds on to it and delivers it all the way back to Kolvik. Probenda. TM closes down the space. Capetti in his second year with Maryland, transfer from Marist, very successful career with the Red Foxes. Probenda. Dancing with the ball. TM applies the heat, commits the foul. A very similar position on the field where you scored your goal in 2013, just on the opposite side. Well, this is this is a really dangerous spot. You're going to see an outswinger from Kamani Stewart Baines, but we've seen him take a few of these in the opening three three games in some very dangerous service from the freshman. Look for some of those big boys for Maryland getting forward, see if they can put ahead on this one. He was involved in both goals for Maryland so far this season against UNCG, a goal and an assist, a laser into the box. And a free kick for UVA. And Colin Griffith cannot believe it. You know, Patty, Maryland has a lot of options up top with Riley and Griffith. We haven't seen Luke Van Hooklum tonight, the freshman from Illinois. What do you make of all the number nine striking pieces that Sasha Sarovsky has on his roster? I think there's a few points there. I mean, I, I think it has a lot to do with the quality that Sasha Sarovsky is able to, to get in recruiting, that he has choices at the number nine. And I think it has to do a lot with finding who your goal scorer is. We, we talked early on about the lack of goals from this Maryland Terrapins team in the, the opening three games. Certainly a tremendous finish there from Capetti tonight, but they're still trying to find their number nine, and, and he will rotate and, and see a few different faces here tonight. Gashi inside the box, Afonso lays it back. Anor wasn't there. Yeah, Maryland without Malcolm Johnston from last year. Box-to-box -box midfielder, had six goals, eight assists a year ago. No Joshua Bulma as well. They 
are missing Hunter George from last year. So a lot of attacking pieces that they don't have from a year ago. They returned just 18 of their 39 goals for 2022 when they made the second round of the tournament and won the Big Ten regular season championship. Couple of substitutions here, one for either side. Virginia brings on Parker Sloan in replacement of Reese Miller at the left back spot. Stephen Capetti comes out of the game. And Maryland brings in Cameron Gerber, a freshman from Boulder, Colorado, who has only played in 13 minutes so far this season, all against Missouri State. Into Afonso, but it did not stay in bounds. And the assistant referee noticed that, so it's a goal kick for Maryland. Women's sports take over the afternoon every Sunday on ACC Network. And this week, we start at noon Eastern with field hockey. Number eight, Syracuse takes on number 15, UConn. Then it's a soccer triple header with Virginia Tech hosting number 20, Northwestern. Number two, FSU welcomes in UF. And we cap the day with Wyoming and Louisville at 5.30 Eastern time. UVA field hockey yesterday, number six in the nation with an impressive 6-0 victory at Temple in Philly. And here in Charlottesville, it's been a very impressive pace between these two clubs. Meeting number 85 all time. Maryland leads with a record of 44, 30, and 10. Long ball over the top. Anor, isolated. Anor passes for Pella. Nearly brought down by Afonso, and Maryland clears it out. A lot of nervous times, Patty, inside that Maryland defensive third. Well, and you're seeing something a little different here from Virginia. Those three in midfield seem to be in a little bit of a rotation. Allender now dropping a little deeper as you see uh, Maryland getting out of the break here. Stewart Baines with the right foot, a curler. Oh, man. That would have been on the highlight reel. This freshman from Toronto, he's special. Well, I mean, we've talked about it time and time again already here in the opening 35 minutes, though, as you see Kamani stewart Baines getting, getting a little breather here coming off. But this is how he can beat you just so fast in transition, running at Will Citron, a good cut across, and, and then just can't quite wrap that lethal right foot around the ball. But just an electric freshman as Stewart Baines can change the game in an instant, and you got a little bit of a taste of it there. Hey, if you're Citron there, Patty, what do you do against Stewart Baines? You give him the outside, inside. Like, what are you thinking there? I mean, I think you, you got to push him outside and you got to stay in front. Uh, Citron, just a, a little bit of a stab there and, and Stuart Baines going around him. Just try to keep Kamani Stuart Baines in front of you and, and, and not allow him to get to that favored right foot. Listen, easier said than done and, and just a special talent, but you got to try to stay in front from a defensive standpoint. Alfonso nearly got there against William Kolvik, who gives him a little bit of a slap on the backside. So Maryland watches Virginia make a change here on the right side with Visa coming out and Elias Norris, the grad transfer from George Washington in at right back as TM is set to throw the ball in. And that guy has been busy with his mouth and his whistle. David Erbacher. Virginia with another substitution here. As the Cavaliers bring on the sophomore Number forward from Boston, Triton Beauvoir. He takes out Leo Afonso, who put in quite the shift. Patty, before the game, you said, despite Afonso being involved in all three of the Cavaliers' goals so far this season, that you felt like there was a lot more in him. Yeah, and I think, I think there still is. That, that was a good opening shift from Leo Afonso. I think not only what he did with the ball at his feet. Chipped in towards the six. Just to finish that thought, not yeah. only what, what Afonso did with the ball at his feet, but the leadership he brung, you can't understate that here in, in the opening minutes of a very emotional contest. Uh, it seems like he has seized the moment and, and he feels comfortable in, in this environment. Yeah, Fonzo's spring was interesting, to say the least, because he thought that he would turn pro, whether that was in the MLS or somewhere else. 
but that didn't happen and so Afonso returned in the spring and coach Gelnevac said that the attitude and the disposition just wasn't necessarily there he was kind of down on himself but they met after the spring and from that conversation they figured out hey you've got everything in front of you here you're on the cusp of doing something great you've got a great team let's go out and do some special things here I think that's right and you know, George Gallinov has his experience as a come, actually shut, shut Leo Afonso down early in the spring, gave him a, a few extra weeks, said, let's just set the slate clean. And there could be some positives from coming back for Leo Afonso. He has room to grow as a player. He has room to grow as a leader. And hey, by the way, if you stay four years in college, you no longer are tied homegrown to, to enter Miami so you can enter the Super Draft. So, so definitely some silver linings for Leo Afonso and, and being the leader of this Cavalier team. Yeah, he trained with their second team this summer, so it'll be interesting to know what he decides to do after this year, but still plenty of soccer to play. And now some space for Elias Norris asking for the ball. Beauvoir, two out in front of him. Colvick gives it back to his goalie, and Seeger blasts it towards midfield. Norris brings a lot of pace on that right side for UVA. Well, he brings something a little bit different from Paul Visa. He likes to get up and down a, a little bit more than does Visa. He, he's more athletic, but I think it'll be interesting to see how George Gelnovac deploys him today because you don't want to get caught out in that right back spot going against a very athletic Maryland front three. And so you, you have to be a little bit more conservative if you're Elias Norris in playing defense first and, and not allowing yourself to get caught out. This play stays on side for Sloan, drives it towards the front post. Ping pong's free and out of play. Virginia has two. It feels like it could be four or five for the Cavs. Uh, and this is a really good sequence from Parker Sloan down that left-hand side, coming off the bench. A little bit of a one-two, picks his head up. A really good cutback here, and just the poke from Steven Anor almost sneaks in at that near post, but better from Virginia in finding the combination play. Parker Sloan, uh, a player who was recruited as a forward at a high school, has transitioned into that left back spot and is only getting better and better as this early season goes on. Yeah, Patty, as the game continues to evolve, you're seeing these outside backs with a lot more speed and a lot more playmaking abilities. In towards the 18 yard box for UVA, and it's scooped up by Holden Brown. You sense a massive change from the time you played to what you're seeing now in the collegiate game, especially with those outside backs? I, I, I really don't think so. Okay. I, I think you've seen college soccer, a very athletic game, very physical, and, and you're going to continue to see that the outside back oh, evolve man. to be, you know, an attacker. And if you can't cover the ground, it'll pass you by. And it's really what you see across the board, not just on the UVA side, but Castabile and, and Kento Abe. Now we've seen Prebenda in. Prebenda is a player who loves to get forward. And so I think it's really just, you know, you got to be able to do that if you're going to find the field. Just over four minutes to play in our first half. Appreciate you being with us on ACC Network Extra. First meeting between Virginia and Maryland in Charlottesville in a decade. Corey Spector with Patty Foss, the 2014 national champ with the Cavaliers. Great night for soccer, the greatest rivalry in all of college soccer. A lot of action early in the match. Leo Afonso with a PK goal for UVA. Stefan Capetti with the answer, and then Motiem made it 2-1 for UVA. Space for Probenda. His cross a little too strong, and Norris watches it roll out of play for a throw. Substitutions. We have seen a lot of substitutions in the first half, partially because of how intense it has been between these two former ACC rivals, and also the temperature. It's in the high 80s still, and it's 8 o'clock Eastern time. Yeah, and I think when we talked to Coach Galnovac early on this year, he was very high on the depth of his team. He is not a coach who has been known for using substitutes. Usually you'll see him only go two, three deep. On the other hand, though, Sasha Swarovski has been known to go 11 deep off the bench and just rotates. That, that's been his MO throughout his career. So now you're starting to see both sides take advantage of those college soccer substitution rules. Yeah, Virginia has 37 players on its roster. Maryland with only 28. Of course, we're still on the outskirts of COVID and how that impacted eligibility and all those things. Like, I'd imagine, Patty, when you played, that roster was near 30, right? 
Certainly at least 30. And, and I think you kind of have to, uh, as the college soccer season is so condensed and, and you know that you're going to pick up injuries, but you'll find as it goes deeper and deeper that teams will rely on, you know, 12 to 16 players kind of and find their rotation really hitting stride mid midway through the year. Towards the middle for Van Hooklum. Great slide tackle there from O'Connor. And UVA clears it out with Daniel Mangarov in the game. Beauvoir has it, but he stepped on the ball. Keeps his balance. Beauvoir to the outside of Knorr. Axel Allender slows it down. Umberto Pella on his right foot. Pella slides it into Beauvoir. Maryland clears it aside. It seems like in the final third that Virginia's attackers have a lot of flexibility in where they can go. Sloan pushes it ahead on the foot of Mangarov. Guy who has started a lot in his career off the bench tonight. Back to Pella, tees it up. Kept it on the ground, but it slides wide. Patty, I just like the way UVA is moving in the final third. Well, UVA has found really good spots wide, and they've had a good rotation there. You see Danny Mangaroff getting down that left-hand side, finding the cutback. But that's where they've had a lot One of success, and I think One that's where they've differentiated minute. themselves in comparison to the Terps here in, in the first 45. They've been able to string the ball together and, and build through combinations in and around the box, something that Maryland really has lacked and will try to find going into the second half. Gashi pushes it forward. He was clipped, though, by Kenny Quist Thurston, who was really angry at David Erbacher, and he's shown yellow. And now some words exchanged. So we know that these two teams clearly don't like one another, but they also have a propensity to talk because in both teams' last matches, they were on the verge of some really heated discussions. UVA with George Mason, Maryland with Wake Forest. And no shortage of that fuse tonight. Uh, and I'm not sure w what the conversation is there from Chris Thurston, because that, that is a really, really bad challenge at midfield. And uh, I've seen a different color for that one. I, I'm not saying it should have been red, but it opens it opens yourself up be late studs exposed locked out that right leg so i don't see any discussion around that being a yellow card from david Erbacher. well patty you saw a different decision just a few nights ago with zach golden of george mason yeah and that challenge is just as bad and i think we, we talked about it a, a few nights ago it's borderline so th i have no problem with it being yellow but that is a not a good challenge and it's unnecessary 60 yards from goal Time growing short here in the opening 45. Hollander brings it Ten, down for Beauvoir. Nine, Maryland clears eight, it all the way out seven, towards the Virginia six, defensive third. Five, Up in the air for four, Parker Sloan. Three, and time has two, run out in the opening one. half from Klockner Stadium. You having fun, Patty? Because I am. <laughs> That is as good a, a 45 minutes as you'll find in college soccer. I think Virginia, the better team through 45 minutes, they, they, are, they are certainly worthy of a 2-1 lead going into halftime. But you saw the emotion. You, you saw the atmosphere. You saw goals. All you can ask for. And just hopefully more to come here in the second 45. We saw a busy night for David Erbacher, our head referee. But boy, he's been effective so far through the opening 45. Yeah, I mean, he's been putting some pretty big spots. I mean, we talk about the emotion and we talk about the, the back and the forth, but the penalty call was certainly a penalty. And, and then he has been in the spots that he needed to be in booking wise and kept this kept the lid on this game thus far. Now, 45 minutes to play. It's going to be a big job, but uh, definitely a good job thus far from, from the center referee, David Herbach. Alfonso and TM, the goal scorers for UVA. Capetti on the board for Maryland in half number two. Off we go. Alfonso with a neat move. Alfonso inside the area, lays it across, and Maryland intercepts. Mangarov there to intervene. And now the Terps get it outside the 18-yard box. Patty, what are you looking for here in the early moments of half number two? Well, sort of looking for some tactical adjust adjustments from Sasha Sorowski to see if they can break this Virginia press. Anor to Afonso, who is stripped, and Maryland regains. Go ahead, Patty. Well, I mean, you're, you're seeing it now. I mean, this is what we saw from Virginia in those uh, the opening 45 was a, a, a deep press deep in that Maryland's 
half. Maryland struggled to find that the, the ball out that, that unlocks Virginia and going forward. And so now you got to see if you, if you can find a different way if you're Sasser Swarovski. I mean, the first 45, it just didn't work in possession. you, you got to be able to build out of the back, build through that press, and find the ball in that Virginia half if you're going to create some chances. And for Coach Gelnovach, much of the same here? Yeah, I think it's much of the same, but the, the message also has to be you, you need to be cognizant of players like Stuart Baines for Maryland and, and Capetti on the right-hand side because we saw it in the first half. Stuart Baines can change this game in an instant through his athleticism, through his speed, getting at you on the counter. So for how good Virginia was in that first half, they only, they only have a goal lead to show for it, and that could change in an instant due to the immense talent on, on that Terrapin side. Anor bolts down the far side. Anor waiting for an option to the far post for Allender. Heads it up in the air, and Maryland clears it out with the Yarnay teasing. Brendan Lamb in the game for UVA. The freshman steers it to the outside. Anor to Lamb, a drive, it's blocked. Maryland clears again, not too far though. As William Citron sends it out of bounds. We saw UVA really lock it down against George Mason on Thursday night in a 1-0 victory for the Cavs. The difference though in that game well, George Mason had 10 men in the second half. For right now, both teams are at 11. We'll see with that physicality if anything changes. Mangaroff brings it down. Alfonso speeds onto it. Low shot denied. Big save, Seeger. And now Maryland thinking about the counterattack. Griffith falls down. Virginia back on it. Well, if we said it once, we said it a hundred times. I mean, that press for Virginia is creating chances. You saw another good one there for Leo Alfonso and an equally good save for Seager. Alfonso against T's in. Alfonso with the right foot. It dribbled wide. Oh, Alfonso is starting to feel it. Well, you see one come seemingly out of nothing here from, it, through that midfield. It's a really good decision here from Danny Mangroff. Just to slip Leo Alfonso, picks his head up. Maybe a little bit of a telegraph there, but Micah Seeger in a good spot to make the save and keep this at a one-goal differential. And then this one's a little bit different. It's a good early ball over the top for Maiden O'Connor. We haven't seen that yet tonight. And again, Leo Alfonso getting in behind. A tough angle there, unable to put it on frame. But you're seeing a couple different ways that Virginia can beat you there. And another good sign for George Galovac here to open the second half. Alfonso again inside the 18. Man, that ball has been attached to him like glue in the second half. Lamb to Alfonso. Lamb makes the overlapping run. He stays on side according to the AR. Lamb with space, floats it back post, seeking Allender. Maryland, though, clears it out. Back to UVA. Umberto Pella, left foot deflection wide. Corner kick, UVA. Oh, this is explosion from the Cavaliers to start the second half. But it's measured from UVA. I love the insertion of Lamb here in the second half. The freshman has just, just a spark plug, brings a lot of energy to the game. And so inserting him in midfield in that number eight role, you see him combining with Leo Afonso there. But he, he has already made a difference in this game, covering a lot of ground in that Cavalier midfield. UVA looking for a handball, meanwhile. David Erbacher says no. Foul here on Maryland, though. And UVA does gain it back. Yeah, Lamb's a freshman from Apex, North Carolina, not too far away from Raleigh. He played in 51 minutes off the bench against George Mason, a career high, albeit only three, now four games into the season. Played with Atlanta United, too, prior to college, and here he is making a mark. But he's not a big dude, just 5'6", but he's a spark plug, and he, he's physical, he's strong. He covers a lot of ground in that midfield, and I think in a game here that can be frenetic at times, has been back and forth, he, he's a really good solution for George Galinovac there in central midfield. Mangarov with a shot. It was blocked away by the one-man wall of Griffith. It's back to Mangarov. Thought about letting it go out of bounds. Mangarov still maintains. Chipped into the box. Afonso lets it bounce. He's offside. That would not have counted. Offside against Afonso. Back to Maryland. 
pretty good save there from Micah Seeger nonetheless, though, point blank. Sophomore making just his second career start. Didn't play the entirety of last season. Behind Jamie Lowell and behind Nicholas Newman as well. Two-time All-Big Ten second team selection a couple of years ago. And a deft little touch there from the big center back, Aiden O'Connor, to, to find Leo Alfonso. Unfortunately, clearly a step offside, but a really good start here in the opening six minutes for George Galinovich and these Virginia Cavaliers. Hey, who says center backs don't have good touches? I, I think me, usually. Oh, well, I guess your center backs didn't really like you all that much. Well, I mean, 6'4", 220, and Aiden O'Connor with a little clip there over the top. <laughs> this is a nor. He's been noticeable. Back to Maryland. Haven't called Alex Nitzel's name all that often. The captain for this team, a senior, didn't play in the first two games for Maryland. He was part of that long list of injuries for Sasha Sarovsky in the preseason and why he believes that this team is still growing. Maybe a chance for Stuart Baines, the freshman, a couple of step overs, shifts to the right, he shoots, deflected off the post. Oh, in a blink of an eye, this kid is special. Well, we've said it time and again. I mean, Maryland has really struggled to put passes together, but that dude, Kamani Stewart-Baines, has so much talent that he's able to, to change this game in an instant. You see it there just running in that Virginia back line. Elias Norris and Brendan Lamb unable to keep him in check and just kisses that far post. It's a great chance for the freshman yet again for Maryland. Patty, I know we associate speed with long distances. He ran an 11-second, 100-meter dash as a junior in high school as this is poured into the box. Brown had trouble with it. Maryland regains. Costabile into the box. It skitters free, and UVA finally clears. Helter-skelter for the Cavs. And I was going to say, Stuart Baines is really quick in the small spaces. Well, and he's as good, you know, side to side as he is vertical, and really good with the feet, too. I mean, he... His touch is immaculate. He's put in quality service. We saw it on that first goal, picking out Capetti in the box. I mean, there's not a lot that Kamani Stewart-Baines has shown that he can't do and, and really make it a mark on this game in the early season for Maryland. And although he's a freshman, he has some familiarity with this program because Stefan Capetti comes from the same soccer club as him, the Vaughn Soccer Club up in Toronto. And Maryland has consistently recruited from that area in Toronto in the past. Maryland, number 16. Luca Costabile exits the match as Joe McDade enters, one of the two McDade twins, his brother Jack. Joe more of a defender. He can play anywhere along the back line. Stuart Baines tries to force his way through multiple Cavs defenders. It's out of play. And the signal here, a throw in for Maryland. He's quick, but he's also a pretty physical guy. And his brother is actually Nikhil Harry, who was a wide receiver for Arizona State and a first round draft pick by the New England Patriots a few years ago. Yeah, I mean, pretty physical. You saw in the first goal, he just tossed Paul Visa to the ground like it was nothing, then picked out Capetti in the box. So certainly a, a physical presence. What could Maryland do on this set piece opportunity here? Well, I think you got to put a, a good ball into the box. The, la the last one we saw, I mean, Holden Brown looked a little shaky on the punch and on the follow-up. So you want to put this one just on top of that goalkeeper if you're coming Stuart Bates. And Colin Griffith is attached to Brown right now. Into the box, it bounces back outside the 18-yard box. McDay plays it back to Kento Abe. Mangarov closes down the space. Free kick, Maryland. Off the foul from Lamb, who is disgusted by the call. Maryland decides to switch the field here off the free kick. McDade curls it in. Brown gobbles it up. The senior from Indiana. He played in every single minute over the last two years. He didn't start against Loyola Marymount. Joey Petruni, the transfer from Coastal Carolina, got the nod in that game. But this is Brown's net to lose this season as a senior. I think that's right. And George Galdovich will tell you, he, he is as comfortable with Petruni as he is Holden Brown, but really sees them both with pro prospects and quality in net. Yeah, I remember speaking with Sean Docking, the Coastal Carolina longtime head coach last season, did a game involving... Coastal, and he said the same thing, that Petruni is a guy who 
you're going to see in the MLS someday. You know, you talk about depth all the time with field players, but Patty, you know better than anybody. You certainly need it with goalies as well. Meanwhile, Steven Anor goes down in a heap. Oh, that is not good. And keep in mind, Anor did not return after he received a spikes up tackle against Golden of George Mason, the one that resulted in a red card in the 35th minute the other night. So we didn't know if we would see him tonight. He started, he has played, but he's having some trouble now. Yeah, you saw him pull up there on the left-hand side, immediately looking for that substitution. Usually it's a good sign to, to see that stretch, but the freshman already through 55 minutes has covered some ground and certainly feeling it. OTM is ready to go for UVA, if need be. Patty, what have you, you thought of Maryland's last, I don't know, three, four minutes here? Yeah, I think probably the last five or seven minutes for Maryland has been a little bit better. They finally spent some time in the Virginia half, put Virginia under a little bit of pressure. That's what they need, long stretches in the Virginia half, see if they can start to connect in around the box. We know they have quality, but it definitely was a frustrating opening 45 for that man and, and the rhythm through midfield, especially for Maryland. It's been better here in the last stretch, but they're going to need more of that if they're going to find an equalizer. So we'll keep our eyes on Anor here and see if he can return because he's been really impactful with his speed as well on the left flank, just as Maryland has had speed on that side with Stuart Baines. And it is TM who will check in for the Caps. Coming, coming in, we have the Cavaliers, number 11, Mo TM. Coming out of the match, number 9, Stephen Anor Gianfi. Good to see Anor on his feet. Had he ever sensed that fitness sometimes becomes an issue for young guys in the collegiate game early in their first season? No question. And, and I think it's something to keep an eye on as we go deeper into this game because both of these teams already have put a lot of mileage uh, in the tank. And Sasha Swarovski noted it when, when we talked to him this week, but. Maryland played on Friday versus a Virginia team that played on Thursday. That extra day of rest is huge, especially early on in the season in which we're seeing guys put in a lot of miles on the odometer. Now an injury for Maryland. And keep in mind, it was over 90 degrees for most of the day today in Charlottesville. It really has not cooled off all that much. It's still in the mid 80s. So you start to think that cramping can become an issue. This doesn't appear to be a cramp as Umberto Pella checks in there. Caitlin Engen is the athletic trainer for Maryland. Kim Hinton, meanwhile, has been very busy for UVA, the athletic trainer. That's Stefan Capetti, who is down for Maryland, by the way, the goal scorer. Guy who had a really good career with the Red Foxes of Marist. All-Mac first team selection back in 2021 with nine goals and three assists. Ouch. And Pella has to be careful. I almost think it's on that second one where he's trying to get out of it, just gets tangled with Umberto Pella, but a little bit hobbled is Stefan Capetti. Yeah, and Patty, Pella's got to be careful because he's already on a yellow card. Pella has three yellow cards already this season, and this is game number four. You get suspended after your fifth. For Maryland, entering his number 44, Luke Nothing intentional there, though. Yeah, I think that one's a, a certainly accidental and just unfortunate. Two guys getting a little bit tangled up coming out of that throw. So Anor out of the game. Now Capetti out of the game. Elias Norris is out for UVA. Is Cavaliers make a change. Parker Sloan is now on that right side for the Cavaliers with Reese Miller on the left. Coach Gelnovac early in the season certainly mixed and matched his outside backs over the first four. UVA used just 15 players in the first half. Maryland 18. That is normal for Coach Sarovsky to go into his depth. 
McDade uses the outside of the foot. Stuart Baines runs out of real estate. That's how you got to defend against him, right? Well, you you got to use that sideline as an extra defender, and you're seeing a rotation there right back from George Kalinovich, just longing for someone to be able to slow down the ultra-speedy Kamani Stuart Baines. What do you think Parker Sloan brings differently than the other guys defending Stuart Baines? I, I, Parker Sloan is definitely pacey. I, I think he, he, you know, he's a converted forward. He's maybe a little bit less of a true out-and-out -out defender, but I'm not sure that's necessarily what you need against uh, Stuart Virginia. Bates. You need someone who can stay in front, and, and that's definitely the message to Parker Sloan, is maybe just drop off a yard and, and allow Stuart uh, Bates to run at you as long as you can keep him in front. Maryland. Yeah, we have seen him dance along the sideline all night long as David Erbacher has to settle yet another situation here. Pella observes the space in front of him. Mangarov to his left. Tried to clip it in for Afonso. It wasn't there. Maryland has it back with Stuart Baines. He turns on the Jets really quickly. Leon Kuhl to the outside for McDade. Down the line for the freshman Van Hooklem. Tangled up there with Citron. Van Hooklem finds a way to get it inside the box. Terps still have it. Turn and a shot. They're asking for a handball and they get what they ask for. So Virginia had the PK in the first half, scored from Afonso. And now Maryland has its turn. And again, it's Brendan Lamb who is very confused. Well, this one starts co coming out of nowhere, but down low. And yep, uh, certainly it is the extended arm from Brendan Lamb there. Anytime you, you stick that out, uh, it's, it's a, out from your body making contact. That's the right decision from David Erbacher to point to the spot and an unlucky break there for the freshman. And it was Max Riley, the sophomore, who took the shot, forced the handball, and now Maryland with a golden opportunity to tie the game with Luke Van Hooplum. Holden Brown, the only hope for UVA, makes the save! <laughs> Jubilation on the goal line for the Cavs! That is a match saver. Curled into the box off the corner kick. Pops free. Reese Miller had enough of that. What an incredible save from Holden Brown. Uh, and Sasha sorowski has got to be scratching his head, asking what he's got to do to get a penalty to find the back of the net. The second straight game that Maryland has not converted on a PK. This time, it's Van Hooklem being denied. A great save there from Holden Brown to keep the, hit the, his team out in front. It was Joe Sahetsky who had the opportunity and scored against UNCG. It was Stefan Capetti, meanwhile, who missed the PK in the game against Wake Forest. McDade to Stuart Baines. A lot of eyeballs on him in this match. Kuehl. Teasing. Waits for something to open up. A lot of mileage on that guy's legs. Stuart Baines. Nitzel turns it over. Stepping up Miller. Reese Miller locks it forward. Using those long strides. Check that. That's Aiden O'Connor. And now on the outside, UVA settles it down. That's uh, really good for Maiden O'Connor just to read that pass, step out in front, and, and break a little bit of that Maryland pressure. Hollander takes his time. And now Virginia slows it down. You like this decision here from the Cavs? I, I do, and I, I think in a game that's been helter-skelter at times, just putting your foot on the ball, Pella there was the one who pulled it out, finding Sloan, and just getting a little bit of a knock around here. You see a giveaway there from Parker Sloan, but if you're Virginia, Maryland 
has started to put that pressure on you. They've started to find a little bit more success in their attacking half. And now you can build on the momentum from this. A huge save from Holden Brown. A little bit fortunate to see that one go over the net, but just reads the eyes from Van Hooklum, pushes it out, and keeps his team out in front. A massive, massive moment in this match. You think Brown was guessing there, or he saw something? I, I think it's some of both. I mean, is it an educated guess? Yeah, probably. Van Hooklem definitely opens his body up. Looks like he, he's going to push it that way, but it's, it's a tremendous read there for Holden Brown. Meanwhile, Griffith makes about a 60-yard run, maintaining possession of the ball, and he earns a free kick. Now, Griffith is asking for the ball to be closer to the 18-yard box. But David Erbacher said that the initial foul occurred about 10 yards outside the 18. And I think it's just the pull there from Gashi that David Erbacher's getting this one back. It's not this tackle from Citron. He touches the ball. But again, I think that's the right decision from the center referee. It's the initial pull that just knocks him off balance that, that he's whistling for. Sasha Sarovsky is upset. He thought that there should be a card given out here as he discusses things with the fourth official, Joe Whirl. So now Virginia sets up what looks to be a three man wall. Little ambitious from this spot if Maryland decides to go to goal, or is that on the table here? Uh, I think probably some of both. Uh, uh, certainly, we've seen. Uh, it looks like Kamani Stewart-Bain standing over. We've certainly seen he's capable of smashing one from here. To beat Holden Brown, it, it's going to have to get up and down in a, in a hurry, but I would look for the freshman to have a go here. Stewart-Bain's a curler from distance. Brown did not get a piece of it. Gold kick UVA. Yeah, and I think that's that's the issue with that, that sort of range. You, you can't hit the curler. you got to smash it and see if you can get a little bit of a knuckler there. Even if that one's on frame, I, I don't think it's count Colton Brown in. Great to see UVA bring on Stephen Anor back in the game after he took a knock about 10 minutes ago. And he'll suit up on that right wing spot for UVA as Holden Brown delivers the goal kick. Patty, when in this match with Virginia still maintaining a one goal lead, do the Cavaliers you know, maybe sit back and, and play things a little bit more safely? I, I don't think for another 10, 15 minutes for sure. And I'm not sure you ever do with how this game has played out and, and the success we've had on the press. Maryland gives it away. TM the long strides. Plays it back into space. Allender tees it up. That's blocked. And Maryland clears with McDade. Just too much of a counterattacking ability from guys like Stuart Baines. Well, that, I think you've had a lot of success on the press. You've been pushing Maryland back, uh, pushing, putting them in rhythm for long stretches of this game. You sit in, you're just inviting that, that talent from Maryland to pick you apart. Anor dipping the shoulders, bobbing and weaving. Good combination play. Alfonso waits, tries to go to the left foot. It's tapped away by Teasin, and Bjarne Teasin gets it out of the 18, back in the possession of UVA. Allender chips it in. Nobody home for UVA. Instead, it's Seeger. Just over 18 minutes gone by, second half. Thanks so much for being with us on ACC Network Extra. With Patty Foss, Corey Spector, our great crew here from Charlottesville. 2-1 the advantage for Virginia. Cavaliers with two goals in the first half from Afonso and TM. Maryland got the goal sandwiched in between by Capetti. Maryland, though, missed a PK earlier in the second half from Luke Van Hooklem. Goes over the head of Citron. Aiden O'Connor helps out his fellow center back. 
Van Hooklum directs it down the line. Stuart Baines, Sloan attached to him. Stuart Baines picks his head up, finds an option here with Max Riley, driven ball in, Virginia clears. Nitzel lifts it towards the far side for Kento Abe. Maneuvers around his defender, TM. Lofted ball back post. Holden Brown's got it for UVA. A lot more scoring in this match than you may have anticipated. Yes, a lot of intensity, but you're talking about two teams that have really struggled to put the ball in the back of the net over the first three. Yeah, that's right, and, and we saw it early on. I mean, this was a game that had a lot of emotion and was just back and forth, especially that opening 20 minutes. Could have had another goal, missed penalty for, for Maryland, and, and a lot of chances did Virginia have eight shots in that first half. But, yeah, it's been a, a treat to watch both of these teams throw punches here tonight. Brown takes charge in front of Van Hooglum here and notices the space for Reese Miller. It's been a lot of fun to watch these teams attack one another especially in that first half, an up and down tempo. Now more of calculated possession here in the second. Sloan to Afonso, leaves it off for Anor. Steven Anor with space on the right foot, drags it left. Anor shoots, save! Another clutch stop from Micah Seeger. It's still free though for UVA. TM loses it, and Maryland's got it. We said this in the first half. It feels like Virginia has been on the verge for more and more, but they've been held to just two. And now some trouble here for Axel Allender, the senior from Norway. You know, Patty, Kamani Stewart Baines has been the best player for Maryland tonight. I think Micah Seeger's been number two. Well, uh, certainly a fantastic stop there. Here, here you see Stephen Anor's quality, though, just sensing the ball, getting in a good spot, running at that Maryland back line. This one he puts really right at Micah Seeger. Credit the sophomore for, for coming up big, making his body big, but a really good run from the freshman for Virginia, just unable to slot that one home and find that third goal. That was Seeger's fourth save of the night. Sophomore from Henry E. Lackey High School in Charles County, Maryland. The 2021 Southern Maryland Athletic Conference Player of the Year. Coach Sarovsky really compliments his distribution, his ability to pass with both his feet and his hands. But his shot-stopping ability has certainly been up to test tonight. Kolvik gives it back as Seeger waits for something to open up. Miscommunication here. Sloan steps in front. He claims it's off of Stuart Baines, and he's right. Since Parker Sloan has been on this right side for UVA in the second half, he has really limited the chances for Stuart Baines. A hydration break for both sides. Well-deserved, much needed. Intensity really high here in Charlottesville. Sasha Sarovsky directing Kento Abe. We would be tied, but how about this from Holden Brown? Well, just keeping the Virginia Cavaliers in it. We'll take this out and as they get some water. We'll Hello, welcome to McDonald's. May I take your order, please? Quarter pounder with cheese. Royal with cheese. I haven't had a Big Mac in a long time. How many filet of fishes did you eat? That's over several months, Ryan. In Puerto Rico, a McFlurry, it's called a Senor Flurry. Two golden menus. McDonald's. 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 They're McDonald's. I'm McDonald's. Are you going to order something? MLB chooses T-Mobile for Business for 5G solutions to not only enhance the fan experience, but to advance how the game is played. Now's the time to see what America's largest 5G network can do for your business. The future is threatened by enemies often unseen they alert Marine. and unexpected. In the midst of an uncertain and evolving world, 
The need for Marines to defeat these shifting threats is critical because the need to ensure stability for our nation has never been greater. When there are battles to win for America's future, there is one constant. Marines. The hydration break is over for both squads. George Gelnovac for Virginia, 28th year at the helm for the Cavaliers. Sasha Sarovsky, year number 31 for Maryland. Corey Spector, Patty Foss with you. Patty, what did both teams talk about there during that timeout? Well, I think if you're Maryland, it's probably about time that you, you start to go up Virginia to up the ante, see if you can find that equalizer. Really, both teams, though, it, it, in the opening 20 minutes and a half, have looked a lot more composed on the ball, have, have knocked the ball around. It's been a high level uh, of college soccer. It's a little bit different from that from that first half, and, and we'll take a look back on that first half, whereas we saw chance after chance, it felt like Leo Fonso opening the scoring. Kamani Stewart-Baines with the ball in there for Stephen Capetti, and then Mo Tiam back to, to put the Cavaliers up top. You see the save on the penalty from Holden Brown there, but this second half has felt a little bit different from the first. The first, back and forth, back and forth. Both teams showing some composure on the ball. Look for that to, to build in the final 23 minutes. I'd be shocked if we're done scoring here in, in Charlottesville. I'll certainly take more goals. You on board with that? A any day of the week. <laughs> Let's do it, man. So, yeah, back-to-back -back games now for Maryland with Miss PK. Stefan Capetti in the game against Wake Forest on Friday. And Luke Van Hooklum tonight misses against Holden Brown. Lofted ball into the box as we resume play. Afonso brings it down against Abe. The Sao Paulo native directs it back to Reese Miller. Drives it in, short post. And a goal kick here for Maryland. And Seeger wants to go quickly, and this is a really good decision because you've got Stuart Baines against Sloan as Maryland really tries to crank up the intensity. Van Hooklum tackled. Terrific play from Citron. Maryland, though, does regain. Stuart Baines inside for Kenny Quist Thurston. Freshman to freshman connection. Abe against Afonso. A nutmeg, but it's steered aside. Alvin Gashi helping out for UVA, corner kick Maryland. Abe's been very aggressive down that right flank. Almost as aggressive as Sasser Swarovski was with Abe coming into the break. <laughs> it's good, Come, getting down that right-hand side of the senior, going at Virginia and winning a corner. Very positive for, for that right back. You can't possibly say that this rivalry no longer exists. Yes, Maryland left the ACC for the Big Ten in 2014. These two programs played three times in the 2013 season, once in the regular season, once in the ACC tournament, another time in the NCAA tournament. They played four times at Audi Field over the last five years. Back on campus sites tonight, and the first matchup here in Charlottesville between these two in a decade. Jack McDade is in the game for Maryland, 15 in black. Miller does the defending along the far side for UVA. And now Maryland with extended possession. Sloan detects it. What do you sense here of how UVA is defending? Well, I think they've, they've dropped in a little deeper than we, we've seen through the first 70 minutes, but Maryland's been quality on the ball and is forcing some of that on, on their own side. You gotta be really careful throughout this stretch if you're Virginia, not, not to allow Maryland to really come into their own and start to create those chances to find an equalizer. And Maryland has brought in some players who haven't played all that much or at all tonight in Jack McDade. And now on this near side with Mac DeVries, four in black, and now a free kick for the Terps. Pella, very noticeable in the opening 45 minutes. An early yellow card. He forced the PK that Afonso scored for the Cavs. Forced that man to make a call. David Erbacher. Max Riley, the lefty to take it. One-man wall from OTM. 
Riley towards the six, headed away. Maryland has it back. Oh, a great tackle on the outside. Miller clips it forward. Anor brings it down. And the Cavaliers slow it down as Gashi gets it to the outside for Miller. Deflected ball. Kome Ubogu in the game. The junior from Alabama. Back we go the other way. Nice slide tackle there, denying the chance for Van Hoopla. And now some trouble for Citron. Yeah, both teams giving a lot tonight. Emptying the tank. And you're starting to see the effects of, of just the physicality and back and forth nature of this game paired with the heat and humidity in Charlottesville and a lot of players starting to feel it. Yeah, we're sweating up here and, well, we're not doing any physical activity. So you can imagine how hot it is down there in this humidity. The McDade twins link up here. This is Joe McDade, back post. Stewart Bates. Joe McDade with the overlapping run. Stewart Baines delivers it to the inside for Jack McDade. Kent Oabe, a lot of room. Crosses in, nobody in the back post for Maryland. Sloan clears it out, takes no chances. And I don't think this is a game that you want to get into if you're Virginia sitting deep, allowing those outside backs for Maryland to push forward, put service after service into the box. It's going to be a long 19 minutes if you allow that to happen. DeVries across the field, beyond the grasp of Afonso. Shot from distance wide. Max Riley trying to stamp his impact here. Tonight after the Clemson-Duke football game, the Huddle Crew will be live at Wallace Wade Stadium to recap all the action. Make sure to catch our college football coverage over on ACC Network and the ESPN app. You see the hurting, by the way, that Mike Norvell and company put on LSU last night? How about that for Florida State? <laughs> Brian Kelly not, not backing up his words before that one. No. Obogu keeps it in bounds. Anor accelerates. Kolvik in front of him. Anor commits the foul, and a lot of disgusted Cavaliers fans in the seats here at Klockner. And Anor stays down again. And Steven Anor has put in so much mileage tonight. It looks like he may have just emptied the tank there, going after one more run, but the freshman Asking questions of that Maryland back line again. Freshman from Ghana who really opened up some eyes in the preseason, had five goals in three exhibition matches. By the way, he's very well known for his backflip celebrations. We haven't seen any of those tonight. And now he'll get stretched out by the de facto athletic trainer, Mo Tien. And you see Stephen Anor, just a, another pressure there on w William Kolvik. And that, probably a foul there, good decision by the center referee. But you see him just hobble there and perhaps some more cramping for the freshman. Is he just out of gas? Uh, I, your guess is as good as mine. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not, not going to ask those questions. But it looks like the stretching certainly looks like some cramping there from the freshman. Yeah, he's been down multiple times tonight. George Gelnovac may have a decision to make here. It's Triton Beauvoir right behind him who takes off the penny, and yeah, he's going to make a sub. Kim Hinton, the athletic trainer for UVA, tending to Anor. You can see him wincing. It's a shame if he can't finish the match because he is really been incredible. Gashi delivers it forward. Ubogu chasing it down. Kolvik has trouble with it. Afonso is on it. Tackle from behind, then he shreds the shirt of Kento Abe, and David Erbacher realized that. Maryland quickly back in play. Across the field, Sloan intercepts. 
Hello to TM. Ubogu. Big run on that far side. Ubogu didn't see it. Alfonso now uses the outside of the foot. Miller in the corner, being hugged there by Griffith. Miller kept it in bounds. How did he do that? A magician. Miller into the box. Alfonso shoots blocked. Motien on the right foot. Tackled by Chris Thurston. Man, Miller's crafty. TM examining Afonso. Sloan thought about the cross. Sloan drops it off. TM knocks it to the outside. Beauvoir. Triton Beauvoir, the sophomore. And now Virginia thinking about a spell of possession. TM with the right foot. Alfonso stops, starts, in for TM. He falls down. He wants a PK. David Urbacher says no. But it's a good stretch of possession for Virginia in and around that Merrill box, showing a lot of patience, working the ball, working the clock. Ultimately, just a bump there of Motiam. But Virginia, it, it, this is a, a, now we get to look back at Reese Miller. Just a little flick here, a little fortunate to get around the outside, picking his head up. But so much talent there from Reese Miller on that left hand side all night. Back in play we go. Ubogu. Humberto Pella tangled up on this near side. Possession one back here from Stuart Baines. Down the line it goes, a speed contest here. And Citron takes no chances. Virginia making the safe plays defensively here with a one goal lead. Maryland is set to make three changes here. Costabile, Capetti, and Nitzel all back 10, in the game for Sasha Sarovsky. Number five, Alec Nitzel, and number three, Luna Costabile. McDade to the far side now for Abe. 1v1 against Afonso. And Afonso with nice defensive work. And Afonso needs some help. But the referee didn't stop play because the ball was back in. Into the box. Stewart Baines near it. Virginia gets it out of the 18. And now Erbacher will stop as they tend to Afonso. And he's calling for a sub. And he's holding his lower back. Afonso, in addition to the disappointment of not turning professional this past offseason, he also dealt with a little bit of a back issue as he holds his lower back right now. This would be a crucial loss for Virginia, Patty. Yeah, Leo Afonso has covered a lot of ground. Not, not only what he's added on the offensive side of the ball, but he has really done the job defensively all night, and especially in this second half when Kento Abe has been bombing down that right-hand side, trying to get end line and, and get balls in the box. Leo Fonso has been there and playing that defensive side of the ball, so this would be a, a tough loss for George Galinovich, but again, this is a deep Virginia roster in 2023, and really it has to be next man up for the final 15. George Gelnovac with a very tough decision as to who comes in for Afonso, who is clearly in some pain. It looks like Michael Sekulius is the one gaining instruction right now. You see him to the left of your screen. The junior hasn't played tonight. He scored his first career goal against Maryland at Audi Field a couple of years ago in a 2-1 loss. What could Sekulius bring to the match here? I think Sekulius is a guy we've seen in the starting lineup in, in previous years, has a lot of experience coming out of that New England Revolution Academy. But he's another spark plug. He's going to do the job defensively. He's going to cover ground, and he's a physical presence. So I think a good decision there from George Galavach, a guy who will seize the moment and be comfortable in this, in this situation. 
You know, the one thing we haven't talked about tonight, this is a Virginia program that wants to respond after getting blown out by Maryland a year ago, 6-1 at Audi Field. Different makeups for both rosters, a lot in the transfer portal, a lot of freshmen as well. But Virginia clinging on to a one-goal lead. Gashi pokes it forward down the line, and Beauvoir misses the target of a Bogu. DeVries drives it long. Down the line, Capetti, the goal scorer for Maryland tonight. Capetti's on it, lifts it into the box, and Holden Brown is aware. Ubogu gets the first touch on it here. Gets it onto the chest of Sekulius. Dances around Nitzel. Ubogu falls down. Referee doesn't give that one. Back to UVA. Maryland wants the call. And Ubogu stays down. Flicked forward, and it looked like Gashi was trying to not deliver it, but he did. Stuart Baines. 13 minutes to play in our second half. Appreciate you being with us on ACC Network Extra with Patty Foss, Corey Spector with you. Our great crew here from Charlottesville. All three goals in the first half. Maryland had a chance to equalize on a PK with Luke Van Hooklum inside of 30 minutes to go, but he missed on a save from Holden Brown, and that's why we're at 2-1 still. DeVries sends it all the way across. Miller heads it down for Sekulius. Turnover, though. Abe inside the 18. Abe had his pass deflected by Aiden O'Connor. Right back into the six. Holden Brown engulfs it. Patty, what's Maryland thinking here in the final 12 minutes? Well, I think probably more of the same. I mean, they, they've really come to life in this second half. Kento Abe has been a real bright spot down that right-hand side getting deep in Virginia and, and putting balls into the box. I think it's got to be more of the same. They're having a lot of success getting the ball wide and serving it in, in that Virginia 18-yard box. If you're Virginia, you've got to close down those wide areas because that is where the lion's share of chances is coming for this Terrapins team. Foul on Obogu as he drags a turp right into the screen. Back to Maryland. That was William Kolvik, the junior. Coach Sarovsky says he's playing his best soccer of his career right now, the junior from Norway. And those guys in the back have been busy tonight. Kolvik and the Arne Tizen. Chances on both sides this evening. Kolvik loops it forward. Virginia regains Umberto Pella. Triton Beauvoir makes the run. Ella decides to maintain possession. He spins off of Jack McDade, who is now called for the foul, and he's shown a yellow card. Yellow card issued to Maryland. The McDade twins from Havertown, Pennsylvania, not too far away from Philly. Both high school All-Americans out of the Shipley School. Maryland, meanwhile, waiting to make two more changes with Tyler Prebenda and Leon Kuhl set to check back in. Sekulius goes down in front of Abe. And it has become a true battle out here. Sekulia stays in. Virginia still has the ball. Cavaliers get it into a Bogu, dragging two defenders with him, and it's back to the Terps. Keep up, keep up, keep up. 
Here come the changes for Maryland. Brendan Lamb also coming in for UVA. For Maryland, number 13, Tyler Prebenda. Fuel started the match for Maryland. We saw Prebenda late in the first half. Pace has certainly slowed down here, Patty, and I'd imagine that favors UVA as yet another player is down here for Maryland. Man. And a lot of this tonight, unfortunately. Uh, this is the combination of a game that's had a huge amount of intensity, although it looks like a little bit of an equipment malfunction there from William Kolvik and a shoe that, that busted on him. But you're seeing guys drop. I mean, it's still early in the season. Fitness is still building, and yet you're playing a hugely intense game back and forth in, in extreme heat. So, so to be expected here. And Coach Sarovsky told us that his team, like any other team, is a work in progress, but he talked about the unsettled preseason. Their field wasn't ready in time. None of the exhibitions were at Ludwig Field. They had a bunch of injuries in the preseason, including guys like Alex Nitzel and Alvi Andrenica, who hasn't played tonight, hasn't played so far this season. So they're still trying to figure out the best combinations. And some of these guys who have come back from injury, like you mentioned, Patty, just trying to find their way in shape here in the opening four matches. And this is an interesting play here from Caitlin Ingham, the athletic trainer. Uh, a busted shoe for Kolvik. You wonder where the uh, backup Under Armors are. You always bring two cleats to the field? At least. Three pairs sometimes? Oh, sure. At least two firm ground and a soft ground. Okay. That is a massive tape job. He's going to look like a mummy by the end of the night. Well, they need that guy back there, William Kolvik, a three-year starter on defense ever since he showed up as a freshman. He was on the All-Big Ten freshman team a couple of years ago. And he started 19 out of the 20 matches last year as a sophomore. And he's played all but one minute this year in the first four. So we're back in play. Everyone's all right. Nitzel asking for the ball. He receives it with Ubogu behind him. DeVries, Triton Beauvoir applies the pressure, and DeVries is forced to send it long. It goes off a of Cavalier, but the Terps regain. Stuart Baines on the outside with an overlapping run here from Costabile. Luca receives Costabile on the right foot. Waits, back to the left, stripped, turnover, Virginia's got it, Parker Sloan. What a great second half he has had. What a really good second half cover from Parker Sloan because he is beat on that first cut from Costabile. Well, he thought he was undercut there by Stuart Baines, no call. Costabile into the box, Brown punches it over the 18-yard box and Virginia can move its line forward. Brown has been very quick outside of his six here in the second half. Costabule brings it down. Beauvoir shadows him. Costabule drives it into the box. Second ball. Virginia wins it. Ubogu off the foot of Beauvoir. And now Sloan sends it away from danger back to the Terps. Eight and a half to go, second half. Maryland seeking the second. Stuart Baines. Nitzel. Now Kolvik using that tape repaired right boot off the head of Sloan, throw in Maryland. Beauvoir thought for a moment that Stuart Baines touched it before it went out of bounds. The officials say no. This goes out of play, off of Stuart Baines. Good work from Beauvoir. Entering Virginia, number 23. Virginia now David makes Okori. a new change. We're going to see David Okori here, the sophomore who hasn't played so far this season from Alexandria, played in seven games last year. 
And Coach Gelnovac opts to use him at this critical juncture. And he's got one job and one job only, and that's cover ground, put as much as you can into the final seven and a half minutes and try to put Maryland under pressure from that number nine position. Yeah, he is fresh as he stands along that Terps back line right now. Long ball, and Micah Seeger's got it for Maryland. How aggressive would Maryland be at this point in the match here? Seven minutes to go, down by one. Extra numbers forward at this point? Yeah, I mean, I think it's time for, for Sasser Swarovski. You've seen the changes that he's made in the past few minutes, putting really that, that starting 11 back on the field with, with the exception of a few faces. Prebenda certainly on the right-hand side, a player who loves to get forward. But but it's time. you got to start throwing numbers forward and, and not worry about getting beat on counterattack because you need a goal, and you're on the road against a very good Virginia team down, down one. Leon Kuehl called for the hold. As the clock continues to run, advantage Virginia. And David Erbacher reminds the Cavaliers, let's get on with it here. Oh, Corey. Loses it, and it's back to Maryland. Max Riley, he forfeits possession. TM, outside, behind Beauvoir. Six minutes to go. Maryland, a team that was very good on the road for a few years, 2016 to 2018, 15, three and five. But since that year, 500, 10, 10 and four. Now, they play tough competition, but not the same road prowess as they once had a handful of years ago. Costabile lugs it forward. Griffith tried to hold it up. Citron does the defending off the body of Beauvoir. And now it's Griffith. And he's tugged down with Alvin Gashi, who helps him up. Gashi gets the yellow card. Yeah, it's a little unnecessary there from Gashi at midfield. It, it just a little bit overzealous, uh, is a sophomore, and probably deservingly going into David Erbacher's book. Seven yellow cards handed out tonight. It's been Virginia dumping the ball into Maryland territory over the last five or so minutes, but now a turnover for the Terps. And here is Sekulius driving forward. Sekulius a shot from distance, and it was right to the goalie, Seeger. Terps look for the quick answer. Off the body of Griffith, Holden Brown takes his time. He waits, he waits, he waits, and he's got it. All right, it's a good takeaway here from Michael Sekulius, just reading the ball, running at that Maryland back line. A little bit maybe of miscommunication there with the Corey, getting each other's way, and ultimately straight at Seeger, but a good shift thus far from Michael Sekulius off the bench. Coach Gelnovac using that depth that he loves. He says this is the deepest team he's maybe had in a decade. And he needs it tonight with the intensity that all his players have put in in this rivalry matchup. Advantage played here for Maryland. Terps using the far side. Low ball in on the foot of Griffith. Spins with the right foot. Griffith maintains possession. Lays it off out wide. Lays her into the box. Rebound, Costabile! And it was blocked inside, I believe, by Citron. Right back into the mixer. It's on to the foot of Riley. Lamb defends. Laid off for Nitzel. Back to Riley. And Nitzel. Coach Sarovsky says that Riley does a really nice job in hold-up play, and we've seen that tonight. Nitzel loops it. Onto the foot of Prebenda, curled in, headed away by Citron. He's holding his head, which should get a whistle right away, and it does. Anytime that there's a potential head injury, the referees are instructed to stop the play. Now, 
Patty, the other thing that comes of interest here, when did David Erbacher blow his whistle and who had the ball? Did Virginia already give it up or did they still have it? First, the concern here for the fifth year center back, William Citron, a captain on this team, his fourth year with Virginia after transferring from Cornell. Right, this is not a, a spot where you want to substitute a center back, a center back who's had a really good night, Will Citron, uh, finding the ball a lot and, and winning a lot of those aerial duels, just as he did there. That being said, George Gunovich does have some options at, at center back, uh, Jack Singer being one of them, the Cal transfer. Looks, though, that, that the sign there is for Citron to continue. Yeah, Singers in his first year with Virginia spent four years with Cal. He played the 90 minutes against Loyola Marymount, but we'll find out if Citron continues here from East Chester, New York, not too far away from Yonkers. And indeed, Citron looked like he wanted to stay in, but he is going to jog off here. Entering for the Cavaliers. And it is Singer who is the replacement. Jack Singer coming in for number two, Will Citron. So the grad transfer from San Francisco. He's put into a very tough spot here with just over three minutes to go, Patty. Yeah, it looks like Will Citron's gonna stay at midfield, try to come right back up. Oh, maybe not, actually. He's headed to the bench now. I thought, thought perhaps he would stay in this game. Singer's the one doing the defending against Griffith. It's back to Costabule. Combining there, Costabule let it hit off the foot of Lamb. Corner kick, Maryland. As the Terps set up for their fifth corner of the night, they go short, Costabule into the box. Skitters free. Virginia still with defending to do with under three to go. All three goals in the first half. Big stop from Holden Brown on a PK from Luke Van Hooklem. Costabule. Virginia gets it back. Motiem clears it out. Uh, Virginia's really got to step their line here. When they clear that ball, even to midfield, you've got to get deeper. Hangs up in the air here for Holden Brown who will certainly milk some time off the clock with two and a half to go. When Maryland puts that ball back towards their, their center backs, for that Virginia line has got to step, not allow them to stay deep in their own half. Here, Holden Brown just will clear the lines, get those white shirts up, and see if you can kill this game off. I'd imagine, too, the two new center backs play a role in that because they're trying to get on the same page in a quick manner. Stuart Baines dancing. Miller heads it away. Under two minutes to go in our second half. Maryland seeking a result. Virginia looking to hold on for a dub. Cavaliers 2-1 on the young season. Maryland a win, a loss, and a draw so far. Stewart Baines, double teamed. Tackle from Sloan, and he's feeling it. Uh, Sloan's had a really good second half here, holding Kamani Stewart Baines at bay, not allowing the talented freshman to, to get in behind that Virginia back line. DeVries lobs it in. Beauvoir's got it for UVA. And he puts it forward. Virginia's back line asking the team to move forward. 70 seconds to go. Everybody back for UVA. DeVries down the line. Costabule with Sloan defending. One hits off the leg One of Sloan. Corner kick for Maryland. The Terps sixth of the night. I look for all those Maryland big bodies to get forward. One last chance here. Serve a good ball into the box. Do this set piece right. Do not do not rush it. See if you can give yourself a chance to tie this game. And here comes the goalie as well, Micah Seeger. Everybody on the pitch inside this attacking third for the Terps. Ahead, I believe it came off the goalie and Seeger and Brown secures for UVA. 20 seconds to go and the clock continues to move. Brown punts it as high in the air as he possibly can. Beauvoir keeps it in bounds. Oh, what a terrific play. No chance here for Maryland. A gritty, determined win for UVA over Maryland. 
in the first matchup between these two teams in 10 years here in Charlottesville. Virginia ekes out a 2-1 win. And thank that man, Holden Brown, for making a huge save on Luke Van Hooklem on a PK at half number two.